going on, everybody? Myself and my friend Corey have gone through our uh, heavy metal collections and come up with 10 albums that we believe uh, best represent the history and evolution of a subgenre of metal known as thrash metal. Hey guys, I just want to thank John for collaborating with me on this video project. This is something that we're both very passionate about. For those of you who uh, are watching this who aren't or wouldn't consider yourself uh, metal fans um, and maybe don't know really what is thrash metal. Thrash metal is a subgenre that got its start in the early 80s, um, actually 1983 to be exact. It had about a, I don't know, 10, good 10, 11 year run where it, it was arguably the most popular subgenre uh, in heavy metal. Of course, they ruled ruled the metal world alongside the glam metal bands of the Sunset Strip. Thrash metal music um, is usually has elements of speed. We define thrash as anything with like speed, aggression, virtuosic musicianship, the attitude, muted strings, down picking, uh, timing changes, things like that. Strumming and also lots of uh, kind of muted alternate picking. Um, and then of course the vocal style, uh, either sh uh, shouted vocal style or yelled in some cases even growled or has a guttural sound to it. So we know that there's various levels of thrash throughout all these bands that we're going to talk about, uh, but we just want to have a little bit of fun with this, celebrate the genre, celebrate a great time in history, and also spark discussion about the changes uh, along the way. So uh, what we will do is break this down into different sections. We're going to show a pioneer of thrash, but before we do that we want to show uh, what, what were some of the influences of those bands, those, those bands that were pioneering bands? Who influenced them to uh, start this uh, new genre? Uh, we're going to spend a little bit more time on the metal explosion when the bands were just coming hard and heavy and there was a big explosion. Uh, record labels couldn't sign these bands fast enough and we had a second wave of bands as well uh, along with the side of the pioneers. And then we want to take a look at uh, the bands, you know, that started, to, you know, when things started to change. What bands hung in there and stayed true to their school through all the changes going on in music? We're not saying that these are the top 20 albums in the history of thrash metal. No, that's not what this is at all. We are simply picking 10 albums that we believe um, are, you know, are part of the story of thrash metal. And then we want to take a look and identify the veterans of thrash. Who were there? Who was there in the beginning? Who contributed awesome albums during the peak of thrash? And then who is still delivering albums today and still relevant in today's world? And then we want to take a look and identify the new school. Are there bands out there still carrying the torch for thrash today? Uh, if so, we want to show those to you. So hope you guys participate, comment, and show us your ten of thrash history. So sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and enjoy. This first segment is called Under the Influence, uh, and in this one we picked a couple of albums that we believe uh, influenced the earliest thrash bands and, and kind of influenced the genre, the thrash genre as a whole. My pick for Under the Influence is Motorhead's Overkill. Not only did many pioneering thrash bands cite this album or the band Motorhead as being an influence to where when they heard Motorhead it just all kind of took off. Uh, the fusion of punk, uh, rock, and heavy metal mixed in there just was a catalyst for many bands that they just took off and started going heavier and started going faster. Uh, the name of the album is Overkill, of course, which inspired the band name. Uh, overkill in and of itself. The opening track has double bass all throughout the whole entire song, possibly the first time in history that that was ever done. This is a killer album and had to be influential. I mean, if you look at 1979 and stack this album up against the other albums that released that year, you'll see how heavy and influential this album was. So my pick is by a band called Diamond Head and their album is Lightning to the Nations and that was their first album. Diamond Head came out of a, another heavy metal movement, which is not really related to thrash, uh, called the New Wave of British Heavy Metal. Uh, but Diamond Head in particular uh, had a great influence over um, probably the biggest thrash metal band, that would be Metallica. Um, Metallica actually recorded one of Diamond Head's most well-known songs, 
uh, especially in the metal underground, and that would be Am I Evil, and that's on that first album, Lightning to the Nations. I think the aspects uh, of Diamond Head and that really show up throughout this entire album um, that Metallica, you know, kind of took from them were uh, was the uh, fast tempos, the uh, high-level musicianship, um, lots of staccato riffing, um, you know, really fast alternate picking, mute picking, stuff like that, um, and then of course the uh, kind of blistering lead guitar solos as well. One of the unique things about thrash metal as a whole is there wasn't really just one pioneer. Um, and actually, I guess it's not really necessarily unique to thrash metal as New Wave of British Heavy Metal that came before it uh, had several big bands at the time that ended up, you know, kind of pioneering the style. And the same can be said for thrash as well. Thrash origins can be traced back to the San Francisco Bay Area as well as LA. It soon spread to the East Coast, Canada, South America, and Germany. Fueled by metal hungry fans, also tape trading. This is the pre-internet era, so there's a lot of tape trading going on and fanzines just created by fans that just want to spread the word and hear all the new and latest bands. That's why I suggest that it all starts right here with Metallica's No Life to Leather. This demo tape recorded by Lars Ulrich and, as well as James Hetfield and then you have Dave Mustaine and Ron McGovney on bass. This right here sparked, this, just sparked the fire that took over the world for about 10 years to come. In my opinion, one of the best of the uh, first albums from the pioneers of Thrash uh, would be Anthrax, Anthrax's uh, Fistful of Metal. Um, this lineup, of course, had uh, different members. Dan Loker of Nuclear Assault fame and also uh, SOD. And then they had Neil Turbin, who was the singer. Um, and that was, that was the only lineup uh, for Anthrax that, were, that recorded as that. Fistful of Metal is, uh, again, it is, you know, early thrash but you know you can definitely see uh, how anthrax got to where basically they are now uh, from that first record and um, you know they have a song on that record called metal thrashing mad great first album it's heavy of course it's fast uh, the vocals are again i preferred joey belladonna and john bush came later over neil turbin but uh, for that first album, um, I think it uh, it served those vo that vocal style served its purpose. Another band of the big four, who uh, again a pioneer, would be uh, Slayer. I really believe that Slayer came into their own and really started to develop. Uh, they hadn't fully realized their sound yet, but they started to develop their sound and what they would be, become, what they are today, with their second album, Hell Awaits. Um, you know, the title track, of course, is an iconic uh, song on that album. Fast chug rhythms, galloping rhythms are all over that record. Uh, Slayer's uh, break, you know, kind of breakdowns, as I guess we'll call them, that they really made famous in their uh, third record, Rain and Blood, uh, are on this record. If you listen to Hell Awaits, there's a big long intro uh, for that title track. And then uh, you know, right after that, it goes into their meat and potatoes, uh, kind of Slayer thrash riff. So, uh, you know, excellent album, um, recommend it. Head on over to Corey's VC channel for part two.